Every so often, an innovation or technology comes along that seems to change things forever. But when that thing or technology first comes out, you never really know if it has staying power or if it's just a gimmick. And that's especially true for footwear. Sometimes you have a technology that comes out like knit uppers that just changes the way shoes are made. Also something like Boost, which changes the way that we think about cushioning. And then you've had things like auto lacing from Nike, which is no doubt cool and it's something that I think people have been wanting for years, but it just hasn't seemed to have caught on. But now in 2021, we've got a brand new shoe innovation which could change footwear forever. But will it? What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the brand new Nike Go Fly Ease. It opens like that. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell down below if you haven't yet and you wanna see more content just like this. And also make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter at RealSethFowler because I usually give sneak peeks of what's coming up in upcoming videos over there. In fact, if you guys were already following, you would have seen that I tried these shoes on and I was very impressed. So what is the Nike Go Fly Ease? Well, essentially, it's a shoe that Nike developed with people with disabilities in mind. What makes this shoe so unique and so interesting is not the actual sneaker itself, but it's the way that you get in and out of the shoe. Now, obviously, if you've, well, been alive, you know how shoes are attached to your feet with laces. But the problem is, there are a lot of people out there who are disabled and lack the dexterity to actually tie those laces or even pull these shoes onto their feet. And in a very cool move by Nike, over the last couple years, they've actually set out to solve that problem. And even though the Nike Go Fly Ease is one of the first shoes to really get national attention, it's not the first Fly Ease sneaker that Nike's ever released. In the past, they've created other shoes that focus on giving people with disabilities the chance to actually put on shoes by themselves. For example, the Air Jordan 1 Fly Ease, which actually just had a strap around the top of the sneaker and didn't require you to tie laces whatsoever. But it looks like in 2021, Nike is taking it one step further, that was an awful pun, with the brand new Nike Go Fly Ease. And what's so interesting about this shoe is not the materials that make up the shoe or even how the sneaker looks, but how you get in and out of it. So the way that the Nike Go Fly Ease works is that there's actually a hinge in the bottom of the sole, a living hinge, that allows the shoe to kind of crease in the middle. Once the shoe looks like it's essentially been broken in half, you slide your foot into the sneaker and step back on the heel. By stepping back on the heel, you push the shoe back into place and you're good to go. Your foot is secure in the shoe, which is honestly incredible. And the way this is able to work is because there's essentially a rubber band wrapping around the entire midsole of the shoe. This rubber band not only helps the shoe kind of snap back into place, but it also ensures that your foot will stay locked in and secure in the shoe. And then when you decide to actually get out of the shoe, all you have to do is step on the heel of the shoe with your other foot and press down and it lifts the shoe back up. And honestly, it's an incredible design. It's something that's so simple but just makes so much sense. Now to be fair, I don't think Nike was the first to come up with this concept. I've actually seen some sketches and drawings and prototypes online before, but Nike was actually the first company to mass manufacture this shoe so that people with disabilities can actually go out and buy it. And speaking of buying it, the Nike Fly Ease Go is releasing officially on March 19th exclusively to Nike Plus members, which is a little unfortunate because that means it's gonna have a relatively limited release. And of course, that also means that it's gonna be a lot harder to find than just walking into your local Foot Locker. However, Nike has said that in the next couple months, they will create a lot more pairs of these and they will be much more readily available. As far as pricing goes, the Nike Go Fly Ease will retail for a price of 120 bucks, which isn't cheap, but it also isn't too crazy expensive. So I've been wearing this sneaker around for the last couple days and I've gotta say, I have a lot of thoughts on this shoe. Overall, I will say that I like it, but there are some points in which I think Nike could improve on the overall design. But before we actually dive into the sneaker itself, let's take a quick look at the box. So the Nike Go Fly Ease comes in a slightly different box than a regular Nike box. And I guess the main reason for that is the color. It comes in this really nice shade of blue. And the official colorway that I picked up is white, black, celestine blue, summit white. And if you don't love this colorway, which I could totally understand, the shoe will also be releasing in two other colorways, an almost entirely black colorway and a black and dark multicolor colorway. But with the box out of the way, let's jump right into the Nike Go Fly Ease itself. So the Nike Go Fly Ease, other than the crazy lacing system or hinge system, is a pretty simple shoe. The front half of the upper of the shoe is primarily covered in this very loosely woven textile mesh. On this particular colorway, the mesh seems to come in an almost clear semi-translucent material, and underneath that you can actually see that there's another fabric that comes in neon green. Then on high wear areas of the shoe, like around the toe and on the lateral side of the forefoot, you've got this no-sew fuse over 
overlay. Another detail that's kind of interesting on the upper of this shoe is that if you look on the lateral side, you've actually got a black Nike swoosh that's pretty heavily obscured by this semi-translucent mesh. So as you can probably tell, the upper of this shoe doesn't have a separate tongue. It's more of a one-piece booty construction. And so in place of a tongue, Nike's added this little blue detail that comes in sort of a triangular shape that also features another Nike swoosh in the center. I've got to say, one thing I really like about this upper is how flexible it is and how comfortable it is even though it's so thin. There really isn't much structure to this upper whatsoever and what little structure is there seems to be around where the ankle opening is so that you can actually get your foot into the shoe without having to try and maneuver the opening open. And then moving inside the shoe, which I've got to say, in this review is so much easier than most of my other sneaker reviews, you've got this really nice bright neon green sock liner. Around the heel of the shoe, you've got some pretty nice padding that isn't overly soft, but is soft enough to keep your foot comfortable when it's inside the sneaker. And then the insole of the shoe also comes in neon green with a Nike swoosh on the heel and doesn't appear to be removable, which would make sense because if you're pulling your foot in and out of the shoe, there's a good chance that it would slide out if it wasn't glued down. You know what? I kind of wonder what would happen if like a lot of dirt got underneath the insole and the heel of the shoe. Like, would it still be able to completely close? Would it still work? I mean, I guess that it would because that's not really where the action is taking place. It's really more taking place around here, but I don't know. Just an interesting thought. Another place for the shoe to get dirty that you wouldn't expect. But now getting to a pretty important detail of the sneaker, and that's sizing. So I grabbed this shoe in my true size, which is a size 9. And I've got to say, so far, it fits perfectly. Nike does tend to be pretty good when it comes to sizing. Like, if they say a shoe is true to size, it's usually true to size. Now, if you're not a regular viewer of the channel, you might think, if you buy a shoe in your size, of course it's going to fit. But that's not always the case. Sometimes shoes just don't run true to size, and there's not much you can do about it. With the Nike Go Fly Ease, though, I'm happy to report that the shoe does seem to fit true to size, at least in my own personal experience. And also, comfort-wise, I'm pretty happy with it overall. It really does lock your foot into place. You don't feel like your foot is kind of sliding around in the upper. The upper is also not too stiff. It's very soft. It has a very sock-like feel. And the midsole, which we'll get to in a bit, is also pretty decent underfoot. Then continuing backwards on the shoe to the heel counter, which again is so much easier to show off when you've got a shoe like this, you've got this really interesting light salmon-colored detail that almost acts as a heel counter. It provides just a little bit of rigidity so that these corners don't get caught underneath the heel of your shoe when you kind of push down on it. And then moving around to the heel of the shoe, you've got this really nice baby blue heel area with this interesting elastic band, which I would assume keeps your heel in place, as well as a baby blue pull tab. I really can't get over how cool that is. That's so cool. Then moving down on the shoe, you get to one of the most interesting and honestly also one of the most important details of the shoe, and that's this Go Fly Ease rubber band. I mean, it looks, it feels, it acts just like a rubber band, and I would assume that it's actually made out of rubber, so it's literally a rubber band. On this colorway of the shoe, the band comes in white and features this dimpled texture, and then around on the heel of the shoe, you've got this embossed Nike logo. And if you just look at the way that the band works, it doesn't appear to move that much, but it does so much to kind of hold the tension of the shoe and hold these two pieces together. Now this is one of the biggest concerns I have about this shoe, because unlike a regular shoe, where if your laces get torn or ripped or broken, you can just replace them with new laces. If you destroy the rubber band on this shoe by getting it caught on something or accidentally ripping it, the shoe's kind of useless. And for a pair of shoes that costs 120 bucks, that kind of sucks. Now, with that being said, I don't really see how else they could accomplish this motion without this rubber band, so it's probably just a necessary evil, but uh, it is kind of something to keep in mind, and it's a portion of the shoe that you might want to be careful about. I do have to say, though, that it does feel pretty durable, and I guess long-term, the only thing you'll have to keep an eye on is whether it loses its elasticity over time. Then moving down to the other very important part of the shoe, we've got the midsole and the living hinge. So according to Nike, this midsole is made up of phylon foam which is kind of just their standard midsole foam. It's relatively comfortable underfoot. It's soft enough. It's not incredibly soft. You're not going to feel like this is the most comfortable shoe in the world, but it gets the job done and it won't be uncomfortable. As you can see, when the shoe is open, like this, you'll notice that the front half of the shoe and the back half of the shoe are made up of two completely different pieces of foam, which makes sense because I'm sure this foam couldn't withstand more than like three or four bends just like this. Now, the other detail you'll notice is this bright orangey red living hinge. Now, if you're not familiar with the term living hinge, essentially what it is, is unlike a door hinge, it's actually only made up of one material and it bends back on itself. So the hinge only works as long as the material lasts. So in this case, as long as the rubber in this corner lasts. Now I don't know for sure, but I can almost guarantee that Nike used a very strong rubber in this hinge so that it should last you a very long time. However, because it is a living hinge, there is always a chance that it might break over time. But so far, obviously, because I've only had the shoe for a couple days, I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. But even though I haven't had an issue with the materials themselves, I have actually had an issue with 
with the function of the shoe. To be fair, it's a relatively small issue, but for someone who's disabled, it is still an issue nonetheless. And that issue is, whenever I step out of the shoe, a lot of times, it won't actually lift itself up to its full height. And when the shoe doesn't open fully, it's actually much more difficult to get your foot into the shoe. In fact, sometimes it doesn't even work if it's not open fully. So what I've had to essentially train myself to do is that when I pull my foot out of the shoe, I need to make sure that it's fully open before I actually leave it. Now that's not a deal breaking issue, but it's one that I honestly didn't expect and one that is kind of disappointing. If you're interested in sort of a long term update of how this shoe works, I'm actually going to be dropping a video in the next couple weeks after I've worn this shoe every day for the next couple weeks. I'm really interested in seeing how this shoe performs when I wear it every single day and what issues might arise or what issues might solve themselves. So if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe to the channel down below and hit that notification bell so you can be notified right when that video comes out. But getting back to the midsole, moving around to the heel, you'll notice that the bright neon green rubber actually wraps up from the outsole of the shoe onto the top of the heel. Not only that, the heel kind of protrudes out from the back of the shoe, and the reason for that is because this is a place that you put your foot when you actually want to step out of the sneaker. I've said it a bunch, but this system is ingenious, and even though there are some small issues with it, it works like 80% of the time. And then finally moving to the bottom of the sneaker, you've got this black, orange, and neon green rubber outsole that features a very interesting sort of ribbed traction pattern. So overall, I've gotta say, I love the Nike Go Fly Ease. It's an incredible technology, and I love the fact that Nike is really trying to focus on creating shoes for people who just don't have the dexterity or are disabled and can't wear shoes like you and I can. It's such a simple system, but it makes so much sense, and it's so cool to watch actually work in person. Aesthetically, at least in this colorway, I'm not in love with the sneaker. I don't think it's the prettiest shoe overall, but again, it's not so much about looks, it's more about function. What this shoe does just completely overshadows what this shoe looks like, and for that reason, if you're interested in this shoe at all, I definitely recommend picking it up. But I would really love to know your thoughts on the Nike Go Fly Ease, and whether you're interested in this technology, whether you'd be interested in even grabbing a pair for yourself, or whether you just <laughs> don't care. So make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.